wherever that place is that you go when you're like sleeping or you're meditating or you're dancing, wherever that place is, they all send me there. School kids might show up and take all the tickets. So there's a little tip for you if you go. I think I read the most books this year that I've maybe ever read in a year. What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. So this is going to be a 2023 wrapped, 2023 favorites kind of video. And it's not so much going to be book related. Now I do have a big stack of books that I'm going to share with you, but I found that I had quite a few favorites um, that were not book related. And so why box myself in? So I'm going to be sharing all of the things that are not book related or mostly not book related for you in this video. All right, first things first, I literally have everything written down on a sticky note. So this is probably gonna be kind of um, in a random sort of order, but we can do like the food things first. So even though it's kind of ironic cause I literally made myself an espresso this morning, I am trying to move away from how many cups a day that I drink because it is a lot and I feel like it might be contributing to some anxiety. So I am trying to lessen my two a day. And so something I'm doing as an alternative is drinking mushroom coffee. Um, there's nothing special about this particular brand. I actually wanna try all the different brands that are out there. I just found this one on Amazon. Now this is a dark chocolate flavor. Um, so when you mix it with milk instead of water, it actually tastes kind of like a healthy alternative to cocoa, like hot cocoa, which was delish. I've had it that way several times this holiday season. But yeah, this is just a really nice way to kind of get the vibe of coffee. Don't get me wrong, it's not gonna taste like a normal cup of joe, but it's, it's a way to get the vibe and a little bit of a kick in a healthier way. Mushrooms are insane incredibly good for you. I could have probably found a better way to say that, but I'm actually reading a book right now called Entangled Life. It's by Merlin Sheldrake and it's absolutely fascinating. It's all about fungi and the incredible ways that they can adapt basically to anything in their, their environment. And I really think that they're gonna like save the day one day. There's so much literature out there about all the different ones that are absolutely incredible and how they can really create like new neural pathways in the brain. I don't wanna get too into it because I'm still like a novice and I don't know a lot, so I don't wanna say anything incorrectly, um, but they are really incredible. And I'm really thinking about taking some sort of supplement or something because the way that they can help your brain and just your overall health is like kind of mind blowing. I'm gonna be incorporating some, some more mushroom related things into my life in 2024 and this is just one way that I'm doing that. All right, next up is not sponsored, but I do have to mention HelloFresh. Boyfriend and I are pretty bad about like when we're hungry, when it actually gets to dinner time, we're just hungry and we want to just eat immediately. And so the amount of times that we would just have a bowl of cereal or throw in a frozen pizza or order Domino's or like it was getting bad to the point where I was like, we need to start eating like adults. And I need to actually learn the skill of cooking. We get three meals a week, I think. They just come right to the door. It's like 60 bucks, a little bit less, I think. Um, that includes delivery and everything. And we just pick our meals on the app. It's just so convenient. It's just, it's real food. Like there's a lot of whole grains. You can choose whether or not like you're vegetarian. We're actually on the pescatarian option right now because boyfriend really loves fish. Um, and I've actually been eating a little bit of fish too for the first time in years. It's one of those services, like once you have it, you're like, how am I gonna go back now? <laughs> because we're actually eating vegetables and whole grains and all the things that we should be. So that's been amazing. I wanna move on to some like, hair hygiene type products. One of them is a hair oil. And this is like super affordable. I got this at Target the other day. It was such a random, such a random thing to pick up, but I've been really interested in hair oils, especially for the winter time, just to keep my hair looking somewhat shiny. We actually have really hard water here at the apartment, um, or so I've heard. That makes it really hard for my hair to look healthy and shiny. It just makes it extra hard for me to keep it that way. So I've been dabbling with a whole bunch of different hair oils. The problem with a hair oil that's in like a dropper is it's so easy to concentrate it all in one spot and then your hair just looks, there'll be like a big wet oily spot and it just doesn't look good. This is the OGX Biotin Collagen Hair Mist. So having it in mist form, honestly it probably doesn't even matter like the brand and it's been so nice to just, like do you see how, I don't even know if you can see it, 
It smells really nice too. It has like a really warm like vanilla kind of scent to it. But this has just been so nice because it doesn't concentrate it all in one spot. I just kind of spritz it all over. You literally can't even feel it hardly, but for the winter especially, keeping it looking really, really shiny and health healthy, hopefully it does look like that way on camera. This has been really great for that. So I don't know that I will ever go back to like a dropper oil. Having an oil, but in like with the nozzle in mist form just like changes it up entirely. So I have been loving hair mist. And then another like hygiene type product. This is the Necessaire deodorant gel. And I cannot tell you how much nicer this is than using like a stick deodorant. I don't know what it is. I think it's the fact that you're not pulling on your skin. I hate that feeling of pulling on your skin. Having a roller ball, it's literally like perfume bottle or something. Um, it just goes on so nicely. Like it just, there's no, there's no friction. There's no resistance. It smells really nice. This is the eucalyptus scent. I actually don't know if they do any other scents. I think the last time I was at Sephora, this is the only one that I saw. I love it and I will pay. I'm sure it was a little bit more expensive than like a typical deodorant that you would get from like Dove or something, but it's so good. I love it. Okay, and now moving on to a few like jewelry um, clothing type items. The first thing is this ring. I'll probably have to do a close up in order for it to kind of focus, but this is um, created by Hannah Lee Duggan. She is a YouTuber and I have seen this ring in her videos for so many years. I think years now. I don't know how long. Um, it just has a little lupin flower on it. Years ago, I literally commented on her video and was like, where did you get your ring? I love that. And she never commented back. And then recently, like just this past year, she launched a jewelry company called Lupin Lane Company, I think. She's got this ring. She has like a pendant with the with it on there, with the flower on there. I think she has earrings. She's got like a journal, a tote bag. Like she's, she's starting her own little brand and company, um, which is just so cool. When she announced that she was, that she had made them and they were for sale, I was like, oh my God, that's like the one thing that I've been waiting for her to say is like where her ring is from. And I think she has a couple of vlogs on her channel where she goes to like the manufacturer, like she goes to the warehouse and you see how it's made. So it is like a sustainable um, business as well. It's not like eight year olds in a sweatshop are making them. So that's really important too, is like this is the sustainability aspect. So definitely obsessed with that and we'll probably be getting more things from her in the future. And then the other like clothing item type thing I wanna mention is something that if you live in the cold, if you live somewhere that experiences winter, like a true winter, um, this jacket has like, I think changed, it's gonna change the winter for me, like how I experience winter. I've never owned anything Sherpa before, and this is actually faux Sherpa, it's not real Sherpa, but it, it feels like it's real, like I wouldn't know the difference. Um, but it's the Free People, um, oh, I forgot the name now. I'm sure it has like a name, um, but it's just their Sherpa jacket. It's so thick and so warm. Now, don't get me wrong, the silhouette is a little bit boxy, so it's not necessarily the most flattering jacket because it does make you look kind of <laughs> big and square. But if it's warmer than like 45, 50 degrees outside and I'm in this, I'm sweating. Like it actually keeps me super, super warm. Love the like, green accent, like this like olivey green color. And then we have some wooden um, buttons that do work, they do function. If you're a wimp like me when it comes to the cold and it's literally, you know, if it's, if it's less than 50 degrees outside, I'm like actually shivering. So having something like that is actually really important. And it took me a, took me a long time to find something <laughs> that actually keeps me really warm. Um, but that's been my favorite thing. Okay, moving on to some bookish type things. I have my favorite bookmark that I think I've maybe ever had. I think it was just this past year. On Etsy, I saw this. It's just a snake bookmark with like a sun, or maybe it's like, it looks like an eclipse or something is happening. Um, it's got some gold foil on it, which I'm obsessed with. It's so pretty. Anyway, it is from an Etsy shop called Crow and Crown. 
The creator had a couple of other ones um, in their shop. It came like packaged so nicely. It had like a film over it that I didn't even realize until like a couple of weeks into using it. And I thought it was like starting to bend at the corner. I was like, oh, it's starting to, you know how paper bookmarks get. And then I was like, wait, and I peeled it. It peeled it off and it was like a protective covering. I mean, it's held up pretty well. Honestly, I would probably repurchase even if it starts to tear up because I just, I don't know. I'm not even like super into snakes. I just think that it's gorgeous. Now now moving on to some books, um, I am just going to briefly mention a few things because I'm doing a whole other 2023 favorites book video soon. Um, it should come up after this video. Um, I think I read the most books this year that I've maybe ever read in a year. And I actually set no goals this year, like no reading goals. So isn't that kind of ironic how that works out? You don't set the goal so you can actually relax and enjoy your books and then you end up reading more. So anyway, um, the first one that I want to mention is In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. This is about a North Korean defector. She ended up um, leaving when she was, I want to say 13. Um, she was able to escape with her mom and her sister. Her sister went ahead of them and then she escaped with her mom. It's just her journey to, well, it says in the subtitle, it's her journey to freedom. Her story is insane. The fact that she is alive is a miracle. I don't know that I will ever forget this book. Um, I've watched several interviews with her. I'll link some stuff below where you can go check her out. I think she even has her own YouTube channel. I think so. I've, I've watched a couple videos, I think. It's been a minute, I completely forgot about that. But yeah, I think she even has her own channel. She's just so resilient. Like she is just the strongest, one of the strongest women maybe alive today, like truly. Basically what happened, trigger warning, she was sold into sex trafficking as well as her mom. She like crossed through the Gobi Desert. The amount of times that she like almost died is just, it's insane. It's one of those books that you read. It's a memoir, I don't think I said that, but um, it's one of those books that you read and you're just like, how is this real? Anyway, she eventually made it to the US and attended Yale. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've read this one. She has just made an incredible life for herself. And she also has another book, um, like a political science book called While Time Remains. And that one is just as incredible. It's not so much about her personally. This one's obviously about like her will to live and keep going. Um, but While Time Remains is very much about um, the American political system. It's about American politics. It's about all of the things that she is seeing that are very similar to what she saw in North Korea. So it's kind of terrifying. I'm not even like super into political books, like political science books. Couldn't tell you the last political science book I read, but it was incredible. Boyfriend and I read this one together because we knew it was going to be good. And then we immediately bought While Time Remains and read that one together too. So I read both of those this year and they were both five stars. Now on a much lighter note, the next one that I want to recommend is actually also um, a memoir. I didn't realize that I grabbed two of those. This is what I was doing while you were breeding by Kristen Newman. This one is just so much fun. So she is a writer, she's a TV writer, and she uh, basically talks about all of the different relationships um, that she was in whenever she would like go on um, vacation to some new exotic location. She kind of turns like the very like modern archetype of what a woman should be and she kind of flips it on its head. Um, and I just thought it was so, it was so interesting. It was really funny. It's very much her just like having a fling every summer in a new country with a new, with a new guy. In her 20s and 30s, this is like her, all her escapades, um, she would call them vacation ships. So the relationships, these flings that she would be in when she was on vacation. Um, so it's just really lighthearted and fun. I would say it's definitely like summer vibes, but if you are in a rut, if you're feeling the seasonal depression right now this might actually be a really good one for winter it's like kind of the perfect armchair escape i'll just read from the back briefly it says kristen introduces readers to the israeli bartenders finnish poke players sexy bedouins and argentinian priests who helped her transform into Christ kristen adjacent on the road a slower softer and yes sluttier version of herself at home i remember taking a photo of this with plane tickets or something. This was like a vacation read. Yeah, I think I specifically bought it for that because I knew that it was like kind of about traveling. And then last up for books, I feel like if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, this is not gonna be a surprise, it is a series. I am so close to finishing, I have three left. 
This is the Girl from the Other Side manga series. There are 11 total um, and I've read up to eight. That was just my reread because I've actually read volumes one through eight before. So nine, 10 and 11 um, are what I have left and then I'm done. I think there's a 12th volume, but it's like short stories or something. It's not like a whole other proper volume, but these are just so freaking adorable. Like I know I've gushed about them so many times, but I will continue um, to talk about them probably even after long after I've finished them. So we have two main characters. We have teacher who is this kind of gnarly looking creature. Um, who looks like an amalgamation of different types of animals. And then we have this sweet little girl named Shiva. Um, and they kind of find each other. This isn't spoiling anything. I think everything I'm about to say should all be things that you find out in the first volume. So she's kind of abandoned by her aunt and teacher kind of steps in to take care of her. So basically what's happening, the reason why he looks like that is because there's a curse that has swept the land. Um, and it's kind of divided the kingdom that she lives in between the inside and the outside. So the inside is where all the humans went um, to try to escape the curse. Now if you are cursed, and that's the thing that they're kind of trying to escape, this is what happens to you. They end up together in a little cottage in the woods. It's super adorable. It's basically cottage core meets horror, but basically they are just kind of surviving together um, while also being on the run, there's a lot of action that takes place um, once you get deeper and deeper into the series. But yeah, it's it's super wholesome. It's so sweet. It has a good balance because there'll be scenes like of them like baking a pie or something in their little cottage. And then the next scene, they'll be like out in the woods, like maybe they need to go to the well to get water or something. And then there'll be something happen, some sort of creature. And then all of a sudden you'll have this like fast paced kind of dangerous action scene. Um, and it, the author just really balances it really well. So if you're looking for like a dark fairy tale type story, this one for sure um, is gonna have all of those vibes for you. I know that if you're like me, you kind of had this idea of manga in your head. Never thought I would be a manga reader. And I know that probably sounds silly cause I was obviously making like a judgment call, but this is just so different from any other kind of manga that I've ever seen when I've been browsing around at the bookshops. If you have anything like this, um, that you have seen that you think that I might enjoy, please leave me a recommendation because I'm obsessed with these. Anytime I finish one um, and I put it in my little story graph app, um, it's always it's always a five star. Oh, that's another one as well I meant to mention. Story graph, the app. Um, if you are, you're looking for like a new way to track your books, story graph, this is not sponsored by them, um, but it's amazing. I found them, I think this year, and I just love it so much better. Before I was literally using Pinterest to track what I was reading, and there's no metrics with Pinterest, not really. Or like the notes app in my phone, I would just like put the title of the book and then check a box whenever I finished one. I was never a fan of Goodreads. I don't know why. I would check it for reviews and stuff and that was kind of it. Having Storygraph has been life changing. Um, being able to track how long it's taking me to read a book, the genre, the page count. You can put content warnings on there. So many different things when you're reviewing a book, like whether or not it's more character or plot driven, like they just really, they really get readers. You can tell with the way that they set everything up um, and the little pie chart that you get. It's just, it's so cool the way it breaks everything down. So I have been obsessed with Storygraph, so I do have to mention them. Then for music, this one, I'm not even gonna try to explain because trying to quantify the way that music makes you feel is obviously like an impossible task. So I'm just gonna put my Spotify wrapped um, up on the screen and I'll show you my top five. Most of these people you've probably, some of these people you've heard of. Everybody knows Lana, obviously. Aurora, I feel like is pretty popular now. She's getting more more well known. Um, I'm not sure about like Robert Francis and Fruit Bats. I'm not sure if those are gonna be like, if, if everybody's gonna be like as aware of who those people are. Um, but I'm gonna put my absolute favorite jams into the description box. You guys can click the links and watch like the music videos. Highly recommend all of these artists. I know everybody's taste in music is so widely widely different, widely ranging, and it's very subjective. If you are in the market for some new music, highly recommend checking out all of these different artists. 
I know it's easy for me especially to get into a rut and I tend to listen to the same people, even the same songs over and over and over again, literally for like an entire year. It's really good to just get out of that sometimes. So highly recommend checking out all of these people because they are chef's kiss. I love all of them dearly. I would die if I met any of them because they're just, they're all incredible and they all just send me, they send me somewhere. Wherever that place is that you go when you're like sleeping or you're meditating or you're dancing, wherever that place is, they all send me there. I hope that you enjoy them too if you check them out. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention was um, a place. Summer 2023, boyfriend and I went to the East Coast, um, specifically to Georgia. Um, so we visited the Georgia Aquarium. Highly recommend, obviously it's a little pricey, but what you're able to see while you're there, like the whale sharks and the beluga whales and all the different, the different like species of sea creatures that you, that we don't have at our local aquarium was worth it right there. A little tip is to make sure that on the day of, cause you can't actually book in advance, on the day of you book some sort of show. So they have the dolphin show presentation, I forget what they call it, and then the sea lion one. We <laughs> had a busy morning because we were flying in the morning of, I forgot basically, I forgot to book that morning, but several school buses full of children were there that morning. Um, and so all the tickets were gone. Um, so we didn't get to see any of the shows, which I think are free, but you do have to reserve a seat because obviously seating is limited. So do that the morning of. Otherwise, school kids might show up and take all the tickets. So there's a little tip for you if you go. Then we drove to the coast. Um, definitely check out Jekyll Island. That was like our favorite thing. The beach there is great, specifically Driftwood Beach. It's, I wanna say more north and you can actually, there's a, I forget the brand, like the, the company, you can uh, ride horses on the beach, which was so relaxing and so cute and so romantic and just one of those things that you kind of I feel like you only see it in like commercials for resorts and that kind of thing So that was a lot of fun to, to kind of splurge on that and get to do that um, But just the beach itself just walking around even if you don't want to do the horse thing It's just so cool all of the driftwood that's washed up on the beach and it's dried out from the Sun and all the hermit crabs scuttling around was so cute definitely watch your toes um, but it was just so cool. We were there at sunset for pictures. My desktop screen is him, my boyfriend sitting in a massive tree that's been uprooted. So cool, like such a cool photo op. If you're planning on like an East Coast trip at some point, Jekyll Island was pretty cool. All right guys, I think that is everything. Thank you so much for watching. I will definitely have my best of 2023 books video up next, I believe. So let me know in the comments uh, what you've been reading, eating, wearing, listening to, music. I would love music recommendations because I can really get in a rut and just listen to my same favorite people over and over again. So if you have like an artist who's similar to one of the ones that I mentioned, definitely leave me a comment. Um, as well as, again, I'm gonna mention it, a manga or, it doesn't even have to be a manga, it could just be like a book, any kind of story that's similar to The Girl From The Other Side, like dark fairy tale, cottage core meets like spooky vibes. Um, because I am I am all ears when it comes to those kinds of things. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.